So Game14 Toolkit 2 released recently and managed to revolutionize Windows gaming on a Mac with added features like AVX CPU support and features like ray tracing. And another thing that they mentioned is that we now have increased performance, but exactly how much has performance increased? So today what I'm going to be doing is comparing seven different Windows games running the latest version of Game14 Toolkit 2 and seeing how much of a difference has actually been made. So the first game that we're going to be looking at is Elden Ring with a new DLC released today, Shadow of the Urge Tree. Now this is running at 1440p on my M3 Max chip at the high graphics detail setting and it's pretty much hitting that 60fps cap. So if we want to see a difference between Game 14 Toolkit 1 and 2 then we need to vastly increase the graphics settings. Here we're doing a comparison with 4k rendering at maximum graphics settings and you can see there is a small improvement from D3D Metal 1.1 on the left and version 2.0 Beta 1 on the right. It looks like we have a frame improvement of about 1 to 3 fps using Game 14 Toolkit it too. It can be quite hard to see because we're trying to line up gameplay. There are a lot of variables here, for example the time of day within the game. However, it looks like there is a small but consistent improvement in D2D Metal 2, but this isn't enough to stop me being terrible at this game. The next game that we're looking at is Counter-Strike 2, so the Mac port of this game was cancelled, so we are going to be playing the Windows version of this game through crossover. And a lot of people are saying that this game is a bit more stable playing through DXVK, which is an alternate rendering method. However, because we're trying to test out Game 14 Toolkit 2 will be running the game through D3D Metal. So again it's a little bit hard to get gameplay to match up exactly so that we can do a direct comparison but from my experience it feels like Game 14 Toolkit 2 is a little bit less stuttery. Frame rates do feel quite similar. I am connected to an online match so none of the resources are being dedicated to running bots on this computer. Overall it does feel like an improvement but it's actually very hard to say. So here we're looking at the Windows version of the game Risk of Rain 2. So this is a third person roguelike game. It uses procedural generated levels. So again it's pretty hard to do a one-to-one -one comparison between the two graphics APIs. So I have read a few reports that Risk of Rain 2 runs better on Game 14 Toolkit 2 but personally I can't see that much of a substantial difference and that's why it's going to be important for us to be using benchmarking tools so that we can objectively quantify how much improvement there is. So next up is Grand Theft Auto 5. So this is one of the most requested games that people ask me to look at on the Apple Silicon Mac. You can see that some parts of this benchmark levels see huge improvements for D3D Metal 2.0, sometimes going up as much as about 40%, but often at the same time they'll render at very similar frame rates. So it's actually quite hard to see what's going on. Anecdotally, I've been playing this on my MacBook Air with the M1 chip, and it feels substantially better than it used to. I've been following the development of GTA running on crossover on a Mac for quite some time, and this is pretty much the best that it's ever been so far. So next we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077, and we're going to be using the in-game benchmarking tool. Here we're running at 1080p at medium settings. I'm using the medium preset because AMD FSR is turned off. This is to make the benchmark a little bit more fair because Game 14 Toolkit 1.1 still has an issue with FSR which I believe is fixed in version 2. Anyway we're looking at again very similar frame rates. You can see that there's something like a 1 FPS improvement on the right which isn't too bad and also Game 14 Toolkit 2 also enables ray tracing for this game. You can enable this if you're using an M3 chip but don't expect good performance from that setting. And here the overall results confirm that one FPS improvement, which is great to have. So next up, we're looking at the benchmarking tool for Far Cry 6. So this benchmark isn't really a fair comparison, and that's because Game Porting Toolkit 2 has fixed many of the visual artifacting bugs that were showing up in version 1.1. So this isn't a fair comparison because a lot of things on the left-hand side of the screen aren't being rendered properly, which is very likely why we're getting a higher average frame rate. These artifacts happen with certain lights and shaders and can be really distracting so it's really great that these have been fixed in the latest version of D3D Metal. Lastly, we're looking at the open world Ubisoft game Watch Dogs Legion. Again, we have a very nifty benchmarking tool which allows us to compare these two games quantitatively. It does look like there is a small improvement using Game 14 Toolkit 2. However, when we look at the actual results, the average FPS is exactly the same with very slight differences in min and max FPS. Not really enough to say whether one is better than the other overall. And this really just goes to show that some games seem to have large differences with Game 14 Toolkit 1.1 and 2, and some differences are just very minimal. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. It's really cool to see that Apple are improving this translation tool over time. To find out how to install this yourself, make sure to click on the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.